going on everybody out there? This is Popular Stranger and we are back at you again today with another Madden 20 Ultimate Team video debuting a brand new series called Mutt Mailbag and what we're going to be doing in this video and hopefully many more to come is basically answering your Mutt and Madden related questions. So last week when I was trying to prep for a Mutt Marketplace video I posted a question on my YouTube feed and I got a lot of uh, answers. The question was, what do you want me to talk about in Mutt Marketplace or Mutt Market Watch? I can never remember the name of my own series. Um, and though I did not put out that video or answer any of those questions, I thought, you know what? This is a really good idea to turn this into a series because not only do you guys always have a lot of questions on YouTube, on Twitter, uh, but a lot of times when I'm streaming on Twitch, multiple questions get asked while I'm you know streaming and, and I try to do my best to answer them all and I really appreciate that you guys uh, I guess respect my opinion and knowledge in Madden Ultimate Team enough to ask me all these questions so this series is only gonna go as far as you guys want it to go I will once or twice a week post the same question on my YouTube feed and if I get enough responses to make a video out of it that's what we'll do so let's get this intro over well it is over let's start with the first question all right so this is the post that we posted last night recording the first episode of mutt mailbag tomorrow what madden 20 slash mutt 20 questions do you want me to answer leave it below so anytime you see a post like this that's your best time to ask me a question and if you see something that you know you like that somebody else asked make sure you upvote it you see this first question we're going to answer here with the four upvotes make sure you click that thumbs up if it's a question maybe that you didn't need to ask yourself but you would like to know the answer to so let's start it out what are the best abilities for certain positions now this is something that honestly i could make a full you know 20 minute video on so i'm going to try to give you the quickest quickest answers possible here and kind of go by each position i have my lineup here uh, at quarterback, right? At quarterback, to me, in my opinion, I'm giving you my opinion and kind of what I see a lot in the community. Uh, for quarterbacks, you need somebody who can get escape artists. It's just, it's the meta this year. Um, so when we talk about guys who can get escape artists, Randall Cunningham, Andrew Luck, Steve Young, Michael Vick, uh, Lamar Jackson, to name a few. Pocket passers right now, unless you are just really in love with that style of play, are just not it. Um, you need somebody that's going to be able to escape out because the way the edge rushers come in this year, um, it can get really sticky and really difficult to move the ball if you're trying to pass the ball. We all know running's the meta, but in my opinion, best ability on, uh, on a quarterback is uh, going to be escape artist. Now, let's move on to running backs. Running backs, uh, several different ones that you can use. It really depends on your style of run. So I really love Jim Brown because... He can get jukebox and he can get bruiser, which means he can make people miss with juke moves. He can also, you know, truck people and stiff arm people with bruiser. Um, one thing that I want to point out here is obviously evasive is really, really good. I don't know if Jim Brown can get evasive. Let's see here. Uh, the one thing that, or I guess the second thing that I want to make sure you guys are aware of is that with evasive it doesn't look like he can get it yet maybe later no he just doesn't have the archetype so with with evasive uh because this is a question that gets asked a lot do i also need jukebox and the answer is no so evasive gives you better spinning and better juking whereas jukebox gives you just better juking i'm going to try to see if maybe uh Tariq cohen can get it on his let me go to tier three not that i'm going to use it so there it is faster animations for spin and juke moves and then if you go to like maybe tier two, you see he can get jukebox. You don't need both of those. They kind of, uh, th they don't do the same thing. Same as spin cycle. You don't need spin cycle if you have evasive. Evasive covers them both. That's why it's a tier three ability right now with this card. And that's why it's a little bit more expensive. So for me, if I had to go with one, it would probably be evasive. It's the most versatile. But if you do like power backs, definitely take a look at bruiser. Definitely take a look at arm bar. Now with wide receivers, I can't really give a great opinion on this one because there's a lot of different options and this really depends on number one if you like to throw the ball at all and number two um, you know your style of throwing so for me I have slot apprentice on Tory Holt uh, what slot apprentice does is it gives you four additional hot routes when lined up inside the slot now there also is outside apprentice so if you have a card that's maybe one of your outside receivers um, I would certainly recommend either outside or slot apprentice. 
I think there's going to be, let me see if it's down here maybe a little further. There's also Wide Receiver Apprentice once you get to a 95 overall. This is the same thing, but he can be anywhere on the field. Outside, inside, slot, it doesn't matter. So uh, with the four additional hot routes, it just opens up a lot to your passing game. That's why I like to use it and it is, you know, the reason why I would, would say that's probably the most important. Another one that's really, really good is Route Technician. I've had certain situations where I was playing against man coverage and I have routes that beat man coverage, uh, but when I, you know, put another receiver on it, like Devin Hester or even Tyreek Hill, guys who had speed, um, they would still not get separation from a guy like Dion, who right now fully powered up can have 96, 97, you know, man coverage. Uh, route technician gets separation and it, it's quicker cuts while running routes. So like you have, uh, you know, post flag elite, you have streak specialist, you have in out elite. These are all very specific to the type of route, whereas route technician is kind of global to all routes. So route technician to me is a really, really important one. And then either slot outside or wide receiver apprentice because it, you know, it opens up your offense a lot. Um, offensive line, I personally wouldn't waste abilities on tight ends either. Your best three positions to have it on offense are going to be running back, wide receiver, and quarterback. Will we get to a point where you get a fourth and fifth, maybe six X factor, maybe towards the end of the year? But right now, I would focus using your abilities and X factors on offense uh, for quarterback, halfback, and wide receiver. Now on defense, again, I, I could really dive into this a lot, but I'm going to try to kind of keep it global. If you have edge rushers, so Lawrence Taylor, Von Miller, Reggie White, Aaron Donald's more of an inside guy. If you have these edge rushers, uh, depending on their overall, and you really have to just kind of go through each power up and see what they can and cannot get, uh, edge threat is, is, is really, really good. So not edge threat elite, um, because that one's going to be kind of tough to get. Well, LT can get it, but there's a lot of cards that cannot. But definitely look for edge threat. Um, tackle Supreme, Secure Tackler, Enforcer on these types of players aren't really a good option. You want more of a pass rushing guy, so Edge Threat, Power Specialist is really good. Um, Lumberjack is bad, it does not work very well. Under Pressure is really, really good because you're going to be able to, um, you know, cause like inaccurate throws from the quarterback from further distances. Uh, Reach Elite is really good. When they're engaged, they're able to still get a hold of the ball carrier, which helps against the run. Um, Goal line stuff, no. Inside stuff is pretty good. Quicker sheds against inside zones. I think outside, no outsiders is, is much, much better. But I would focus more of those on like linebackers more so than edge rushers. Edge rushers, outside guys, you really just want to focus specifically on rushing the quarterback and being able to tackle. Inside guys, like, you know, like Fletcher Cox, Mean Joe Green, um, a little bit different there uh, as far as abilities go. You're still going to use uh, power specialists, uh, you know, finesse specialists. Under pressure is really good. Reach elite still really good with an inside guy. Uh, secure tackler you might want to go with, but I, I would more so look for, again, the, you know, the, the runs, the, the guys that are going to be able to block, get block sheds and be able to stop the run. Um, now, as far as cornerbacks, because the run is so, so... Uh, heavy this year. I wouldn't waste my abilities on cornerbacks at the moment. Um, so I'm not really going to cover over those. If you did, you know, things like uh, zoned out are, are going to be really, really good. Uh, zoned out, lurker, no. Jukebox, no, of course not. Universal coverage, of course, is going to be good. Acrobat's really good. That's kind of like lurker without using him. But in my opinion, guys, even though you can get these, I just right now, because of the meta being the run, I'm not using abilities on, on cornerbacks. Now, on safeties, uh, Pat Tillman, you know, Ronnie Lott, you definitely want Enforcer. Enforcer is, is the way to go right now, right? So uh, with Pat Tillman, he's different because he can get Enforcer at Tier 2. Ronnie Lott can only get Enforcer at Tier 3. Even though the patch that came out today is going to decrease the amount of fake outs or end the, the fake outs when you're using uh, your defender, I still feel it's really important that if you're going to have Enforcer, you need Tackle Supreme too. So on my safeties, you know, uh, Jamal Adams, Pat Tillman, Ronnie Lott, Dawkins, if you're going to put X-Factors on them and they can't get Enforcer, you must, must, must have Tackle Supreme or a secure tackler um, if they can get enforcer the best abilities by far even though people think it's nerfed it's still a game changer enforcer is definitely the way to go and, and that's kind of the same on linebackers uh inside linebackers like shazier lanier um uh ray lewis 
Enforcer, uh, Secure Tackler, Tackle Supreme, any type of combination of those. Um, so I know I kind of went on for a while there on that first question. Again, I can make a whole video really, really deep diving into it, but hopefully that answered the first question. Question number two, will the new protected ability for pocket passers change the passing meta? Also, will its boost apply to jet sweeps? I'm gonna answer the second question first. Uh, no, I don't think it will. They put out a patch, I think, last month that made all types of jet sweep plays not count as passes. And I could definitely see, I'm no game coder, but I could definitely see the AI reacting as if that's a run and not a pass. So I don't think that'll work. I guess it's something we can always test and try when it becomes more prevalent out there. But right now, I wouldn't use my abilities slots on that type of stuff. Um, will it make the uh, change the passing meta? I, I just don't think so. Uh, after today's patch, maybe that meta changes, but I just... Most of the quarterbacks that can get protected, and correct me if I'm wrong, are pocket passers. And I just think throughout the year, because of escape artists, until it gets nerfed, I just really don't see any way that are, uh, or, or any reason why, you know, escape artists and uh, gutsy scrambler and roaming dead eye and dashing dead eye type quarterbacks uh, change from the meta. So, no, to answer your question. Should I put my abilities on 91 Pat Mahomes and wait for a new one to come out or keep Andrew Luck for now until Pat gets a new card? Love your channel. Keep grinding. Thank you so much, Mr. Matt Games. Right now, I would stick with Andrew Luck. I'm pretty confident we're going to see a Patrick Mahomes card come out over the next, I'd say, 30 days. Probably going to be with the Ultimate Freeze promo. But I still think at this point, Andrew Luck is probably, you know, the most versatile quarterback in the game. Will he get an upgrade because he retired out of football? I don't know. But today, answering your question, I'm going to stay put. How much would you play the game if you didn't do YouTube? Do you think the game will survive if serious changes aren't made? I'm pretty sure it's all grown sweaties playing the game. No one in my high school outside of myself for three years has played it at all. Thoughts. Um, I, I don't think you'll ever really see Madden lose a ton of its players unless the game gets horribly bad. I think a lot of people are frustrated with the game, but I don't think the numbers as far as who's playing will ever drop. Um, just because football as a sport is extremely popular, uh, I would probably play less if this wasn't kind of my part-time job. But because there's a lot of other games I really want to get out there and play like I have like four or five brand new games that I've not even opened that I want to play and I kind of just have to save them for the summertime. So to answer your question, I probably play it a little bit less, but I still just loving the game and I think it's mostly because I love the sport of football and I love the, you know, the building aspect part of Mutt. As far as Madden in general, like if they ever took away Mutt, which they would not, I could definitely see me not playing as much. In your opinion, what are the most useful offense and defensive chemistry such as West Coast Power Run and which boosts are good as in Shaker and Brawler? All right, so me personally, I rock, if we take a look at my team here, I rock West Coast on offense um, and West Coast is very, very helpful for like the short to mid passing game. So it boosts things like, you know, catching traffic, throw under pressure, uh, catch in general. So that's why I use it. If you like to air the ball out, you definitely want to go with go deep because that's going to give you boosts in like throwing power and deep route running. Um, for the running game, it would not be bad to take a look at zone run, especially if you run the ball a lot. Running is the meta. Uh, spin move, juke move, run block, like those are the boosts that you get from zone run. I would say those are probably the top three on offense in my opinion are go deep, uh, zone run, and West Coast on defense. I almost feel like you have to have lockdown. I'm not even going to speak about other defensive abilities. It's so crucial to have lockdown tier six just because of the plus two to zone and plus two to man, plus two to play rec, plus two to tackle. Like it just, it's it's just too good. Uh, so those are the four in all total uh, that are most important to me as far as defense. Just make sure you have lockdown. Offense, it's more so of your playing style. Uh, as far as the abilities go, it's tough. I think uh, I think Sprinter took a step back this year. I think it's out of Brawler and Shaker. Uh, Brawler is going to give you the speed quicker. You only need to get 10 items to get your plus one speed and plus one strength. Uh, and if you can get down to, I believe it's 30 items. I can't for some reason get down. I can't see. Um, 
and then you get plus two to speed. I personally like Shaker because I personally, I gotta specify this, value agility and acceleration a lot. So I'm okay with only getting plus one speed instead of the plus two by having Shaker maxed out because I get that acceleration, that means I'm getting to my top speed quicker and with agility, I'm just getting more animations. And if you played this game long enough, you know that this game is heavily based on animations. Could you explain how to use PS4 Remote Play, everything you need, and how can it be used to play Mud away from the console? So great question. I get to ask this a whole lot. Um, from what I can tell you this, right? This is the app, PS4 Remote Play. All you have to do is search for it. It's available on Android and it's available on iPhones. Um, your PlayStation has to stay on, that's number one. Your PlayStation has to be connected to the internet, that's number two. The PS4 app that you use on your phone, you have to be on Wi-Fi. So for example, when I went to EA Play the last two summers, my PS4 is here in New York. EA Play is all the way in LA. As long as I had access to Wi-Fi in LA at the hotel or wherever I was, I could connect to my PS4 and use the touch screen. There's you know, a little layout of buttons that you use, a new touch screen, and yes, you can play MUT. You're not going to be able to play online head-to-head -head games or house rules or anything like that, but it's very, very good to work the auction house, to complete sets, to, you know, list cards. You can play solos if they're fairly easy solos, like ones where you just got to maybe throw a touchdown or um, let the computer run the ball for you. It, it works well. You can't really play defense. I just let the computer play defense for me. But again, they're just got to reiterate what you're asking here. You have to have the app and you have to be on Wi-Fi from your phone. Uh, there was an app called RPlay that I used a lot. They had an update to it like a month ago and it's just not as good. So I've been using the official PS4 Remote Play app that Sony has out and it's free. I have 1,200 trophies and 1.3 million in coins and I need a free safety bed. Also some O-line. Should I get Nat McCourty? Ronnie Lott, or a part of me wants to wait and see what this next promo brings free safety wise. Also hearing about Sean Taylor potentially coming through. Uh, you the man. Thank you. You're the man too. So uh, Sean Taylor is in the Madden Mobile promo for the Ultimate Freeze. I'm pretty confident because of that, he will be in the Ultimate Freeze promo on console, uh, which we should be seeing at some point next week. I wouldn't spend anything right now. I would hang on to your trophies. Until tomorrow night, remember Thursday, tomorrow, there's going to be a special stream to see what our Series 4 content is. If the Series 4 Competitive Master is somebody really good, you're going to hang on to those 1,200 trophies. Let them get cut in half. That means you got 600 trophies. You're only going to need a little over 400 more for Series 4 to get whatever that Master is, if that's a card that you feel you can use. Um, if it's not, then tomorrow night, you should probably make a decision. Get the McCordy or use those 1200 trophies to buy some of the packs in the competitive store and take the coins. In my opinion, as far as taking McCordy or waiting for new cards, I'd wait for Sean Taylor. I'd wait for new cards. Ultimate Freeze usually is the best promo of the year. We get the most content. To me, I'm not buying anything right now. So that's kind of a decision that you got to make on your own. Uh, but hopefully I kind of gave you some ideas on what you can do with your coins and currency. This is my first year in Mutt, and I'm interested in a Jaguar Steam Team. Yes, I'm a Jags fan, and I know they suck. Um, so has Fred Taylor, Keenan McCardle, Jimmy Smith, Mark Brunel, Tony Baselli, I don't know who M. Stroud is, uh, Rasheen Mathid, Mathis ever been in Mutt before? To answer your question, I don't think any of them have. Uh, so Jags and like Texans, you, you guys got it really tough if you want to build a theme team. Um, I would loyalty. I would kind of wait, you know, make a make a, a goon squad, if you will, um, and kind of wait till towards the end of the year to start building a Jag steam team because it's it's gonna be rough out there for you if you try to do it this early in the year. What does a subscriber have to do to play a game against you? I'll give you a quick tip here. I haven't done it lately, and I'll probably bring it back occasionally, more so when the game kind of dies down, probably after the Super Bowl. But on Twitch, if you're a subscriber to me, uh, we do sub games typically on Wednesday nights. Again, right now I'm not doing it because I do have a lot of subs and I can only get to like maybe four or five games, but I do get asked that a lot. If people want to play against me, I totally understand. Um, all I can say is follow me on Twitch, subscribe to me on Twitch, and more than likely towards the end of the year when things die down a little bit, not even end of the year, but like after Super Bowl when things die down a little bit, 
we'll probably have more time and room for sub games. All right, so we're gonna end the video with one last question. And if I didn't answer your question, first of all, I'm sorry. I don't want these videos to be 45 minutes long. Uh, number two, like I said, I'm gonna try to do these two times a week. So if I didn't get to your question, it's okay, ask it again. If I see a repetitive question, don't worry. I'll probably try to make a bigger effort to answer it if I see it a second time around and I didn't answer it the first time. Um, but we're gonna answer Jordan's question. This is random and specific, so bear with me. And I laugh because this is a great question. Uh, when the game first comes out and you open packs and you pull a top tier elite, do you add it to your squad or do you sell it so that you start the year off with some coin? sell everything in the beginning of the year. This is typically how it works. Tons of people open up packs the first weekend. Those cards are fairly, I don't wanna say cheap, but they're less expensive than they're going to be about five days later because everybody gets the game, everybody opens packs, everybody undercuts each other. Typically after the first weekend the game comes out, prices start to go back up because people don't have as much money to be opening packs. I don't want to say the hype died down, but the pack opening hype slows down a little bit. That's your time to sell. As far as keeping the card, I just would not. I would rather struggle through the first month of the game, uh, maybe not having a great team, versus building my coin stack. i rather have a really good coin stack for that first big promo that comes out, because the cards from the start of the game, when the game comes out in August, are only going to get better. They're not going to give us worse cards. I mean, they might. You know, you know what I'm saying. But the card overalls and the stats should only get better from start to finish. Um, so I'm just not, you know, I'm not in the belief that you need to have the best team day one. i rather kind of stack and prepare for what's to come. Because that's when all the really, really good cards start to come out. You know, the first promo and beyond. So hopefully that answers your question. I do thank you guys so much for giving me all these questions. And giving me topics to talk about in the video. You guys don't uh, know how much it means to me. That again, you guys kind of confide in me for your mutt questions. Um, so we'll do this again. Depending on the response. And if you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video. If you got any other questions. You can leave them down there. I can't guarantee to answer them, but next time we're ready to do another m m mailbag, um, look out for the same type of post on my YouTube feed. That's where you're going to want to leave your questions. We may open it up to like, you know, Twitter for one episode, and I'll answer Twitter specific questions, but I do want to keep these organized so I don't kind of overlook all of them. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Popular Stranger, and I'm out. Peace.